welcome back everyone. It's Annette Green here. I am working in my nature planner, which I haven't tended to in quite a while. So I thought I would get back to it. I have one more season that I would like to add to this beautiful planner. Uh, I did leave off with springtime. So I'm going to work on some pages that have to do with fall. Now, you may have seen my previous video where I did some fall pages, but that was in my regular planner. This is my nature notebook type planner, and it's all about um, critters and plants and flowers and things that I see on my nature walks on a regular basis. So I had some beautiful pictures from last fall that I wanna to add to this and then be done with this planner for this year. But the key to today's video will be about, um, I just had this idea that I wanted to make my own pages. Like I want to use the new stencils. Did you guys know that they have new stencils now? I'll show you in a minute. But I wanted to use some stencils and I wanted to make some really pretty pages of my very own using stencils and some dictionary paper and some clever little techniques. And then I also wanted to show you, if uh, we have time, I'll put all my photos in there and everything, but I wanted to show you uh, what I call make-aheads, and we'll talk about that too. So let's back up a little bit uh, before I talk about my make-aheads. I wanted to show you, this is my, what do we call this one? Is this the Jean Pocket Planner? This is a full-size planner. My Nature one is the sidekick size, just so you have a reference of size there. Uh, I have dedicated this particular planner as my art journaling planner. And so I have all my cute little pens tucked in the pocket here. I have used stencils and different types of ink and even some of those pens to create a design on my little pocket. And in here will be all my stencils. And these are stencils made especially for the planner line. So they have three, um, two sets of three holes, so six holes to put into your binder. And then I went ahead and made a little sampler page just so I had a quick reference as to what that particular stencil can do. So I will flip through very quickly. Uh, I, you might see a number one up here. So there's a set one and set two so far and um, I have name, named them that way so I remember which set they belong to. I was just goofing around one day trying different things, kind of turning and twisting them different ways, using inks, using splatter, as well as stenciling, like literal stenciling. So there's all of one and then two starts with this one, which does this great pattern. And this flourish, I just kind of was really goofing around here, pressing the, the ink stencil into the page. There's another one used a little more traditionally. So I had fun with that one. This one is like a cool grid. So this is what this particular planner is holding at the moment. And I went ahead and pre-cut with the Planner Essentials one page die. I think it's one, I don't know. Maybe it's a different one that has no tabs on it. This one, just the plain page die. So I just cut a bunch of blank pages here so I can use them for stuff. Okay. And then Already. make aheads. I haven't done a complete one yet, but I wanna talk about what I even mean first. So a make ahead is kind of how it sounds. Things that you make ahead you're not sure maybe where they're going to be used exactly yet and for what purpose, but you make them ahead of time so you have quick access to um, instant embellishing. So easy things to do like photo frames. And I like to cut as, you know, a handful, but usually I do a black one, a craft one, and an ivory one, and I might do several sets of those colors. And I just keep them in, you know, maybe a bin, or in this case, I have this tray with all this stuff in it. Something that I can just kind of grab from. Same thing with some photo slides. I will talk about all the stamp sets and the dies I use for these. Um, but again, different colors, all the same pieces, uh, even words sometimes. This one says specimen did it three ways, all these little tags. I mean, there's so many dies from Elizabeth Crafts that have these very generic little embellishment pieces that would be perfect to just, you know, as you're sitting there 
with your die cutting machine and some cardstock, just cut out a whole bunch of things and keep them at the ready. Uh, you will see later that I use a lot of dictionary paper when I'm making my backgrounds as a base. And so I did not let any of that dictionary paper go to waste. Of course, I had my whole reinforcers out and I cut a whole bunch of those. And those will be great to ink up any color I want because, of course, the dictionary paper is almost like a white, off-white. All right, so let's go ahead and start making some very simple page backgrounds with stencils and lots of layers and some ink and you'll see how much fun you can have with that. Okay, I've got a scrap sheet of paper back here and what I like to do is cut the sheets of eight and a half by 11 uh, soft finish white in half and I've got a little stack over here of several and again I'm using the 90 pound. Uh, that is one surface that I will use but also uh, I, I love books. I love going to the Goodwill or a repurpose kind of store and finding uh, old books, used books. And I happened upon this one not long ago. Uh, let's see, this is called George Washington's Expense Account. <laughs> I don't really, uh, I mean, you know, it was 1970, so it's not like it was something around when George Washington was, but somebody has taken his ledgers and photocopied them into this book, so, and then there's a lot of, you know, text, of course, telling stories about this and that, but I've never really read it and looked at it. I just thought this was super cool. And so I would select one of these ledger pages, probably one that has a lot of text on it like that, and I would cut that right out of there. Um, some people like to make photocopies, but honestly, I don't mind cutting up books because I like using things up instead of just storing things. So just enough to work with there. That'll be a great background page. And of course, like I said at the beginning, dictionary page got this old, this is shown up in a lot of videos. This is also probably from 1970, I think. Pretty old, 1972. Uh, just an old Webster's Dictionary. So I am constantly cutting and pulling things out of here. Sometimes I even look for a page that has words on it according to what I'm working on. <laughs> So one of the pages that I did make actually has the definition for the word fall on it. Nobody's going to know that. Not worth the effort, but I just thought that was kind of fun. Okay, I've got a little bucket of water here, and my brush has been soaking in it all day long. Not that it has to, but <laughs> that way I don't have to go and wash out the glue. Uh, but I'm going to use a very inexpensive wide paintbrush, and I am going to use some gel medium. You could use liquid um like like a watered down glue like elmer's glue um you could use mod podge you could use a glue stick honestly um i just have this and i'm just going to use it up so i'm just spreading a thin layer over the entire front of this page very thin but even coverage is important of course Okay, stick it in the water. And then I've got my page here. I'm going to flip it over to the side I don't want, and I'm going to glue this right to the back of it, making sure. Yeah, we're on there. Okay. And then you can use a roller or something to burnish. I just have my, my little flat bone folder here, so I'm going to use that. Okay, and I will tell you that in the previous pages that I did when I was experimenting, I did seal the top of them with that same gel medium, and this time I'm not going to. I want to see what happens if I don't seal it. Uh, the reason why I want to try it is because although it looks beautiful all sealed, uh, when you go to do the stenciling and the inking, the gel medium kind of resists the color from being completely true. Um, so let's say like red, it just wasn't taking a deep red color. It was just always a little bit kind of pinkish, not quite red red. 
So I'm going to try it this way and see if I like it. Okay, so of course this needs to dry a little bit. It's it's fairly wet under there. Uh, but I, what I will do is I will go ahead and do the same with this little guy that I showed you. And then I will be right back. Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> I'm running the hair dryer. Not the hair dryer, the heat tool. I just want to make sure you can hear me still. Um, so normally I would let these just kind of set and dry. And then I'd press them under a book. But to speed things up, I'm using my heat tool and as you can see this is happening so if that happens to you just put the heat on it and while it's still warm if you just work it flat like fold uh, kind of curve away from the way that it is wanting to curve while it's still warm that will help a lot and then when we die cut it and everything we won't have to worry about it anymore we can always press it flat later but that's just because I have all that um, very liquid gel medium in there. It wants to curl a little bit. So now that it's warm, kind of help it along. Okay. I mean, it's still a little curvy, but that's okay. My other ones that I showed you very quickly at the top, they were the same way. They were very curved and they're just fine now. So you just have to give it some time and maybe press it under a book. All right, so I'm going to pick a stencil. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the ones I've been using because I really like them. I'm going to use this one with the numbers over here. And I'm going to use two stencils per page so I can show you how to do some layering techniques. Okay, so I'm going to start with that guy. Let me put a little piece of paper under here. Actually, I'll just use my nonstick craft sheet because that is not wasting paper. Okay, so we're just going to put this, I am going to cut this way down to uh, sidekick size so I know I don't have to use up the whole thing here. And I like to do all this first before I cut out the page, by the way, just so you know. And I think that I will go with, I'm using oxides. So this is fossilized amber. And I have these fancy little brushes that really spread the oxides nicely because they're, you know, they're very creamy. You could definitely use regular distress instead of oxides. They will work. They will work beautifully, actually. But I have both and I know that oxides are a little creamier and they blend really smooth. And just, you know, in case you have never used them, just know that they are they are a little bit chalky looking when they dry. And that's just the nature of them. That doesn't bother me too much. All right, so now I'm switching to carved pumpkin because these are going to be kind of fall pages. Uh, I want it to have a little bit of that warmth. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of blending both colors. And as you can see, I'm skipping around so it's not like solid right on top of the other. And you can see this is very quick. Okay, there's that. And then I have all this goodness on here. And normally you would just, you know, go and wipe this away. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to either grab another sheet like this or at least grab another piece of the soft finish white and rub that on there. I think let's do it on here. And rather than just wiping it away, we're going to wipe it so that it with a baby wipe so that it kind of transfers into our paper. Now it's going to be very, very light. But we can we can go darker later if we want to. It's just you know to do dual duty. So that's pretty cool, right? That's all over the background of that thing. We'll put that aside. And my stencil is now clean. I can let that just sit over here and kind of air dry. All right, and we'll go back to this now. Uh, crazy as it sounds, I'm going to add blue to this. And, and here's where we're going to get into a little bit of color theory and color wheel business. 
Um, because I know, I've looked ahead on my phone, at my photos, I know that there's a lot of fall foliage, there's mushrooms, there are red leaves and orange and yellows. So I don't wanna do those color photos right on top of the same kind of color palette background. But I do want that little bit of warmth underneath. So that's why we did this first. So now we're gonna take another stencil and we're gonna go in with some blue. And the reason why I say blue is because if you ever look at a color wheel, and here I'm gonna kinda of swipe over and show you my color wheel that I have right here on my wall. And when you look at the color wheel, you'll see that the orange and yellow and, and almost orangey red is directly opposed to on the wheel from the blues. So to me, that says that's a complementary color when it's opposed like that. Um, it, it provides contrast, but it still coordinates. Uh, so speckled egg is my light, light blue I'm gonna start with. And I'm gonna get some of that on there. This is a really, really light blue, but it's sort of grayish blue, so it's really pretty. Uh, it's not super dark. So we're gonna use two different shades of blue as well. Actually, we're gonna use a third too, I'll show you. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep that in place while I switch my color over to Salvage Patina, which has a little tiny bit of a teal shade to it. We're gonna work some of that in. Now I don't wanna completely cover up with what I just did with that lighter blue. So I'm kind of looking. Um, you might be thinking, why would I go through all this trouble when I could just use scrapbook paper? Because it's fun. That's why I do it. <laughs> it's fun, it's creative, it's mixed media. Oh, that is looking really cool, right? You can see both stencils. Uh, it seems a little just kind of cool to the eye. You can, you can make out those numbers, but you can also make out those swirls. And then again, we have this stencil that's needing to be clean. So we're gonna go back to our cool little page here. And I got a fresh baby wipe this time, so we're not mixing too much color. And this isn't gonna be real drastic either. It's gonna be very light. But at least I'm doing two things at once by cleaning the stencil and then also transferring that ink to my other page. So very, very cool. Okay, and then one more thing I wanna do is add a little overall blue to this because there's so much of that stark white of the dictionary page showing. Uh, I don't wanna see quite that much white and I want everything to have that same kind of blue feel. But before I go putting any blue over this, because this is oxides, they have a little bit longer drying time. So I want to just kind of heat set it a little bit before I start smearing something else, because if I did, it would just kind of make a big slurry and a mess. All right, and I did decide before I go to do this next step, I went ahead and die cut the page. And I use this rounded corner page. This is from Sidekick Essentials 20, the snow globe page. So it has the page die and then it has a little window cut out and all these other goodies. I just like the rounded corners. And now I'm gonna take that darker blue color, believe it or not, and I'm gonna put that over the top. This is the newest Uncharted Mariner. Again with the oxides. And I'm just gonna go around the outside edge mostly, kind of heavy. It's a beautiful blue. Can you guys hear everybody down by the pool today? It's a Saturday. Okay, so that looks really pretty by itself, but I still want to knock down some of that white in the background. And you notice I did not re-ink just now because I don't want to put a big blob of dark blue in there. I just want to use what's on that brush and just tone it down. So it's really kind of like a light blue background, even though this is a very dark blue ink. And that is exactly 
what I wanted right there. Perfect and beautiful. Now, the last step that I would take here, which is like my favorite thing about Distress, whether it's oxide or regular ink, is the reactive properties. So we know all three of those inks are still sort of wet and they're water reactive. So I'm gonna take just my water bottle here and I'm gonna, I'm not spraying, I'm dribbling, like so I get some big drops. And I'm just gonna let that sit and then I'm gonna bring it close to the camera. In fact, I'll show you some that I already did over here. And you see all those water spots there? That's where it was reacting with all the colors and into the paper. I just love that. Okay, oh, I'm so happy with that. Look at how pretty. Uh, the water drops are not really, really prominent, but there's just that little bit in there going on that is so nice. I just love that. Uh, but I wanted to show you a comparison. I pretty much did these almost identically. This was the one that was sealed on top with that gel medium. And do you see how it's a little more chalky and subdued in its color? Very nice if that's what you're after. But man, I like this one so much better, don't you? Um, it may seem busy to some people, so maybe you don't like that. Maybe you prefer this. But So that's just something to be aware of. It seems as though the gel medium wants to resist just a little bit, whereas the paper, straight up paper with nothing coating it, is much more absorbent and will receive and hold that ink in its in truest color, I think. Right, let's go back to George's ledger here. This is pretty dry. I feel like it's a little damp still, so we're gonna heat that a little, but I went ahead and die cut it. Um, with that same page die. Okay, uh, let's see, do I need to do a little more? I think so. Let's do a little more of this design. If you remember, we just transferred some of this color off of this stencil. That's all that's happened so far, but I wanna go back and add just a little more of that two tones of blue, just like we did. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at that. Ooh, I almost want to stop there, but you know, it's just not going to go with the rest of my pages if I stop there. So I'm going to get that blue and you know, I've just been doing one side of the page so far to demo for you. I will certainly do something to the back sides as well. Yeah, this is really pretty. Don't you love it when people are doing demos and videos and they're talking about how great their stuff is? But, you know, it's a surprise. It's like it's like when you use a uh, the jelly plate or something. You, you just don't know what you're gonna get sometimes and it comes out and you're like, ooh, ooh, yeah, that's really pretty. <laughs> I know you know what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That is really, really pretty. And here is the other one that I did, it's very similar. similarly. Uh, I don't believe that I went over the top of this one with the blue, it doesn't look like. I just did some stenciling in blue and left it at that and went around the outside edges. So if I was gonna use this one, I definitely would go over it again, but this is my favorite for sure. And this was the one that was coated on the top before I did any of the color and this was not. So just something to keep in mind. And of course, the all important step of doing a little water spritzies. And I'll set that aside and let that dry while I move on to the make aheads. One more thing I wanted to mention before we move on to the make aheads is what do you do if you have a page that turned out rather icky, <laughs> like this one? Uh, you can die cut stuff out of it and make it even better by adding a little more color according to your design and make little embellishments which is what I've also done on this icky background. <laughs> I use these uh, mushroom dies. And I will, this is Mystical Mushroom, the set from the art journaling series of dies from Elizabeth Crafts. Um, I will definitely link everything that I'm using below. Okay, and once I get those inked up and whatnot, uh, I will probably add those to my pages. Uh, really, really cute, right? 
All right, so uh, when I cut these out, I was just going to throw this away, and then I got to thinking, why would I do that? It's not so bad. I added a little bit more, like, golden orange on there. Honestly, I think it might look kind of cool to layer it right onto a page that I've already made that maybe I wasn't super thrilled with. Like, this is that muted back um, version of the layering of the stencils. Um, so that could be kind of cool something to think about. You can definitely do that. Okay, so I've got a bunch of my make ahead stuff spread all over the place. I kind of mentioned a lot of these things at the beginning, but I'm going to focus on making a little make ahead example using this stamp set, which I have purple paper in here just to designate how I separate my stamps. This one is called framed and there is a planner die called 1941 photo film slides that kind of works with that uh, stamp set really nicely. So what I have learned, you can see here's a few stamped ones here, and this one is not cut out yet. Uh, I would recommend stamping first and then using the die to lay it right on top of the stamped image and then die cut it out. It's the best way. I tried doing it the other way and for me it just wasn't quite uh, working as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this cute little frame and I'm just going to glue it onto a base. And in this case it'll be craft cardstock. I just had this scrap piece here, so I'm just going to use it. My idea is that I want to have the word specimen and I want to layer one of these guys on here with something in this little window as well that identifies what's in the photo. And then I might take a little uh, circle tag here and I may stamp something on here. I don't know just yet. And I may put it kind of over here. It might have a date, the day that we saw this particular specimen, but that would be one make ahead right there. Just a cluster, ready to go, glued together. Um, if you didn't know what you're going to use it for, you might skip the word specimen, maybe put an eyelet through here, and just leave it at that. It's generic enough that you could do that. All right, I have had a good time making some make-aheads, and so uh, we already saw the first one, which we'll go back to in a moment, but I just wanted to show you just simply uh, knowing that my pages are fall, I went ahead and added the leaves here, but of course you could layer anything to make these little things. Um, and the more neutral the better, because maybe you're making them ahead and you don't know what you're going to use them on yet. Uh, here's another one that I did using just cut aparts from some papers and um, just different bits and pieces from my stash, you know. And although these probably won't go into these pages, I just wanted to show you these are just some fun ones I made ahead uh, with absolutely no purpose or intention just yet. Uh, you know, fish. Who knows? Who knows where that's going to end up. Uh, but it's fun and it's cute and it's already done. And here's another. So this one is really pretty with a lot of blue in it. So those I'll just set aside in my goodies. And let's go ahead and get these on the pages. So we already saw the one over here. Is this the one? No, this is the one. So we already saw this one and I, of course I colored the one mushroom I said I cut out of that scrap of this page that I didn't like very much. So I colored the top of that mushroom and I popped it on there. This is cut apart from a paper. Uh, this is all ready to go and I ended up putting the word specimen over here. So that's the last page in the series I was going to do today. And so let's work backwards. 
I have this one that's going to be facing it. Okay, and that is where this one is going to come in, which I think works out really nicely. Kind of ties everything together with that red and that red. So I'll get that on there real quick. And of course, I'm not putting any glue here because I might put a photo up in there. Okay, and then that looks pretty good. Now we'll flip, and I've already done this page. Because it isn't really a make-ahead spot, I just started to layer up the page. And same over here. This is open right now because I want to put my two photos here and then eventually adhere those into place there. And then this is the very first page, a really, really pretty stenciled page, uh, where I'm going to add these guys. So let's do that. So the idea was that this will go down here and this will go up here. And then I found these great mushrooms. And I think this is from one of the books, reminiscent books. I don't recall. Uh, but I went ahead and fussy cut it out. And I think I want to kind of tuck it there. So I'm going to have to be strategic about what photo I pick to go here. And then I stamp the word fall because that's what I've been doing on all my season changes. And I mentioned earlier at the top of the video, I said I ended with spring, but I actually ended with summer, of course, last time. So fall just makes sense to be next. And of course, I'm leaving this free of glue until I get my photo in that spot. But the pages are done and ready to go. I still had two more pages left over over here. I uh, don't know what I'll do with them for sure just yet, but I will save them. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is, of course, I used the whole reinforcers that we talked about earlier that were just plain white from that dictionary paper. And because they were coated with the gel medium, I did have to use an alcohol marker. So that's just something to know. And then the other thing I wanted to make sure I mention are these. And those were from just a scrap piece around the outside edge of a picture. I mean a page die that I cut out the whole page, but I had this left over. And I'm telling you, I save everything because that it was a great little coordinating way to do the whole reinforcers on both of these pages. And I really love the way that looks. It's great. All right, so that's that. And then we have this spread. And now I just need to get my photos on here so they can be 100% complete. All right, my photos are in place. I have labeled a few things. And I'm very happy with the way everything turned out here. I hope you like it. Uh, I did want to mention a couple of things. And that was um, if you're not feeling super confident with the whole collaging thing, uh, any of these reminiscence, the books, this is three by, you know, just happen to have this one at the ready. But there's so many pages where it's already collaged for you where you can just kind of uh, cut and grab from some of those pages. There's another one. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And also, in case you were wondering, where did I get those mushrooms that I fussy cut and some of those other images? That was from this page. Those mushrooms, I used that image, and I used that image. And I also fussy cut out that little pumpkin there. So definitely can use from existing things already. And then don't forget to go to Google and get yourself a color wheel and print it out and hang it up. So you have reference for that all the time uh, when choosing colors and how to coordinate things and make things really pop on the page. Okay, so that's it for me today. Hope you liked everything. I had a super great time making these pages, of course, and now my nature notebook is completely complete and I'm super happy. So thanks for joining me and I will see you very soon in the next video.